Welcome big dogs. Today I'm going to show you how to run a shock analysis in Abacus. Okay, so the first step you want to do is you want to input your shock curve. So we're going to take a look at this shock curve. So I have a sawtooth shock pulse right here and you can see uh, we have time in milliseconds on the x-axis and acceleration in g's on the y-axis. So I want to convert basically my time into seconds uh, because that's the units I'm dealing with. I can keep everything in G's, that's good. So um, that's what I've done here is here's my shock pulse and then I converted it to seconds. So we'll take these and we'll go into the amplitude category right here. We'll do create and we'll create a shock sawtooth pulse We'll say continue, and then we can just paste that in here. Okay, say okay. Next thing you want to do is you want to go create a shock step. So we'll look at the steps we have in here. Um, you always have to have a modal step before you run a shock analysis. Uh, we have PSD in here. We're not going to run that. Uh, this is a vibe step. We don't want to run that. Um, so we'll we'll keep it like that. So let's go ahead and create the shock step. We'll call it shock, and it's actually uh, it's under linear perturbation and modal dynamics. And so we have a time period of our simulation. We're just going to keep it the same. Uh, looks like we have 30 goes all the way out to 30 milliseconds. So we'll just do that. We should be able to capture the the uh, peak of the response within that time frame so we'll just go ahead and use that same time period and then time increment at which you want to calculate or return the response values we'll just say uh, I don't know we'll say that's going to be our time step right there in seconds next we'll specify damping um, we want to uh, start at our first mode and go all the way to the end so for the modal frequency I think I just went to 2000 Hertz and then for a critical damping factor we'll use 0.05 this corresponds to a Q value of 10 if you've been watching my other videos and we'll say OK. Next thing you want to do is you want to go uh, basically put your make sure your input curve goes into the boundary condition so we'll go to create boundary condition and we'll call it our shock input and it's uh, you can select the acceleration based motion category and uh, what direction you want to put the shock curve in um, so this is X Y Z we'll put it in the X direction for now and we'll select the shock sawtooth pulse profile that we created I want my acceleration in terms of uh, inches and seconds so I'm just gonna put in gravity um, 386.1 inches per second squared. That's going to scale my uh, G values to those units. And so we'll press OK. So now we'll go back to our step module and let's go ahead and create a filled output. It may have created one for us and it looks like it did right here under shock. Uh, what is it returning? Uh, we want stresses, displacements. Yeah, that's, we'll go with that for now. The next thing we want to do is we want to go through and create a filled output. So um, I'm going to create a filled output at my um, boundary conditions to basically verify that that curve I'm putting in is is the curve I'm actually getting right. So um, we'll call this. Uh, We'll go to our sets, and I have a set in here for our boundary conditions, RP underscore BC, and you'll see here we got sets in here. Um, we'll look at our sets. So that's where our boundary conditions are. If we go to our load module, we can see that uh, you know that's where our boundary conditions we're applied right there it looks like it's going to be a pin boundary condition so that's where we're putting our input into so we'll create that in the shock step go to set 
rp underscore bc and we want to collect data at every increment every time step and we want to look at our total accelerations and we want to look at it in the x direction the same direction we're applying the shock pulse so what we want to do also is we want to just pick a node uh, for far away from the boundary condition and, and look at its response. In this case, I've already done that. Um, it's called response node and it's down here at the bottom away from the boundary conditions. And the reason you want to do this is you want to make sure your time step is small enough to capture the response of the model accurately. So we'll go ahead and create a uh, history output. We'll call it response node. Or the shock step, and then we'll go to set response node, we'll call, collect a value of every increment, and then we'll do the same thing accelerations, total acceleration, and we'll capture it in the x, y, and z directions. Okay, and before I forget, uh, one thing you want to do when you put in your curve is you want to make sure your time monotonically increases. Abacus will throw you an error um, and you'll you'll find that out if you skip part of this video but what I want to do is just add in just a you know just a infinitely small you know time to uh, make sure that this column is monotonically increasing so Abacus won't throw that error okay so once we have that um, we should be ready to run this analysis uh, so we'll go ahead and create a job we'll call it the shock job and we'll say continue say okay and then we'll go ahead and submit the job and just give it a minute okay it's completed it took a while but let's go ahead and look at the results so obviously uh, right here my mesh is not real uh, it, it's very coarse um, that's just to make sure that the simulation is uh, not going to take forever and also I'm running the student version so I have some limitations there but uh, before you actually look at the results what you want to do is you want to verify a couple of things basically number one you know are you inputting the correct curve um, into the boundaries and then number two you know is your time increment small enough so that's why we created those history outputs for the response node and our boundary conditions so we'll go ahead and look at that real quick so let's go um, create our history output so let's go look at one of the boundary conditions um, so this is one of those boundary conditions uh, we'll look at the total acceleration in the x direction so we'll save that we'll go ahead and save that and plot it you can see here that is what's being put into one of the boundary conditions you should see this same input everywhere but you'll see here our units um, it went ahead and scaled our, our acceleration um, converted it from G's and then uh, multiplied it by 386.1 so that's what you see here so we want to verify that this is correct so we'll go ahead and take this data and compare it to our input so we'll go back to Excel and you'll see here I've already had some columns put in we'll go ahead and paste that and we want to uh, overlay basically convert this to the correct units and overlay it on our input curve that we uh, have in Excel so we'll take our time in seconds and uh, basically multiply it by a thousand and we'll take our acceleration and divide it by 386.1 to get it in G's and we'll plot that on top of it and you can see here I have already had it formatted to plot it so the dashed yellow line overlays the solid blue line which means that we've uh, put in the correct curve so great that's step number one before you do any type of uh, you know 
look at the stresses and that sort of thing. Step number two is you want to look at the uh, response at the response node. So we'll go ahead and uh, plot that. So we got our response node. We have the response uh, in the x direction. Let's look at that. Okay, what you want to see here is you want to see smooth transitions and not a lot of jags. And so it looks like our time increment uh, that we selected, that looks good. So let's look at the other directions. It should be the same. And you see, uh, yeah, I'm cool with that. So that is the response of the response node over the time period of the simulation. And our time increment looks like, you know, it, it's going to do it justice for this case. Our mesh isn't, but our time increment is. So we'll go ahead and start looking at stresses. And so what you'll notice, first of all, is that, you know, our simulation, um, our shock simulation produced 3,000 frames down here. So you'll see increment 3,000 under the shock step. And so if you go look at this and you step through and you look at the maximum MISI stress, um, you know, you can't really do anything with this. You'd have to, if you wanted to find the max value, um, doing it each step by step, stepping through each frame, it'd just be too tedious. So um, Abacus has a convenient way to display the max stresses at each element. So to, uh, the way to get this is, is uh, what you do is you go to Tools, Filled Output, and you go Create from Frames. And so what you want to do over each frame is you want to find the maximum value for a particular element uh, of over the given frames that you've simulated. So we'll call that, uh, we'll select that option right there. And then you want to give it a name. So let's say Max Von Mises. We're going to look at the Von Mises stress. And then you want to go to Add. And so you want to go into the Shock step and you want to select all the frames. And you want to press OK. And what it'll do is it'll carry those frames over here. And it says increment 100 time this. So it should have went all the way down to 30 milliseconds, which it did. So now what you want to do is you want to um, select what variable you want to look at. In this case, we want to um, look at von Mises stress. So we'll go ahead and select Mises. And then we'll say OK. And it'll take a minute, and it could take a long time, depending on how many elements you have. But I have a very coarse mesh here, so um, it'll move fast. So now what you want to do is you're, uh, you want to go view that result. So you go to Result, Step Frame, go to Session Step, and then you want to select uh, what you created. So I created um, basically Max von Mises strep, stress or maximum Mises named right here, the maximum value over all selected frames. I want to say apply and it will chip update your uh, viewport. You say OK and so that uh, basically reports the maximum Mises stress of uh, each element over that selected frames. So uh, I no longer have to step through each frame. If I'm looking at this element I'd have to step through each frame and, and basically record the stress value but it's already got it here so now we can just go ahead and probe those values and uh, it'll tell us the max von Mises stress for each element and uh, that's it so we know <laughs> so that makes it really easy and that's something really cool that Abacus does for you so um, guys that's all I have to share today uh, that's how you run a shock analysis um, of course, when you have bigger models, it takes longer, but uh, I just kind of streamlined this to show you the workflow so that if you uh, have to apply this somewhere, you'll know the steps to do it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Adios.